Okay, uh, I'm here with Julian Richings. Julian, uh, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me. You're yeah, very sure. the friendliest uh, star I've ever met in any con. I guarantee you that. Just uh, wait. Just, just you wait. Okay. And you emote. You emote very well. Oh. You can do a lot with your face that I'll never be able to do. Oh, like like poor faces is what yes, you're saying. Uh, I like emoting. That makes me sound more classy and professional. Classically trained. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, actually, all I do is I get up there and pull faces. Peter O'Toole said that, didn't he? <laughs> what what actors do is get around, fart around, and yeah. pull faces. I think or uh, something like that. Well, anyways, I, I did approach you earlier, and I said one of the reasons I, I, I wanted to talk to you is that you're in basically everything that I like. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm really into sci-fi, fantasy, horror, like like any nerd in this right. convention is. And you, uh, I, I'm just curious, what did you do? How did you conquer the genre so completely? Because in a sense, you are basically the poster child for sci-fi. I mean, you're, you're like in so many things. Well, I, I don't know if it's conscious. It, it's just my career has gone that way. When I, I look like an unusual, like I've got an unusual look. I, I'm very specific. I'm very, um, uh, I guess I, uh, people identify me as otherly or not quite belonging to the mainstream. So in ev other words, I'm going to be drawn to projects that are about like science fiction or horror where it's the... Um, the others talking it's the, the opportunity for those that feel a little outside the norm to tell their stories so I don't know I find myself being in them and and I tend to play uh, severe characters like either people that have just appeared on the planet or are just about to <laughs> murder everybody so so there I am you know and and I'm game I like it I yeah. like doing that kind of stuff because for me, that's the kind of storytelling that embraces everything. It, it, uh, it's very contemporary, but it goes back to mythological times and yeah. that. So, and the freshest, most interesting storytellers and directors are always in this genre. And there's no shortage of them nowadays. Oh, like wow. you could die watching Netflix for the shows that they've got that are really good. Like yeah. just on one channel. Yeah. That there's a million channels. Like it's insane. That the, yeah, the, it's it's an embarrassment of riches, riches at the yeah. moment, and uh, yeah, to the point where I can't even afford the time to sort of. I, I see a show and I go, well, I can't afford to watch the <laughs> the show, but but I know it's there. You yeah. Know. Yeah. Well, uh, sort of in the again in the sci-fi vein. Um, I know you must have got this question before, but I, I don't like to read other people's interviews because um, I don't want to color what I'm going to ask because I want it to be more natural, right? <laughs> I try to be, anyways. But what um, the new Doctor Who? Uh, yes. the female Doctor Who. Yes. You're a Brit, and you know, I, there's a story in the years ago about people like sort of doing a writing campaign to make you the Doctor Who. That's you said right. you were flattered, but I'm wondering what you think about this new direction. Uh, what, have you seen her? I, ha I haven't seen a show. No. I haven't seen a show. My daughter um, was thrilled, and, and it's, it's funny what appeals to all of us, right? I, for me, it's a, pro it's a progressive move, and I'm happy with that. Yeah, yeah. If, um, so uh, it, it's inevitable, and it should happen. I, I, of course, the purists are going to be upset, but hey, you know, <laughs> we can always go back to where we were, but I think it's important to move forward. They've got the, uh, they had the same problem with the Black Stormtrooper. There's people out there, they're trolls, that's all they do, they live off it. You know? Well, the other thing is, people were very upset with me, I'm on Supernatural, and as death I get killed. Yeah. Who replaces me? A very elegant black woman. Yeah. I think that's very cool. I think that, you know, in terms of the balancing of um, acting and demographics and, and progressive moves, that's, I'm, if I'm a part of that, I'm very happy. And uh, we, you know, our storytelling has to embrace everybody. It's not just for it's a limited just few. So, so it's a good indication to me that the market, the audience, and the sensibility is kind of all meeting on the same level. Um, so, so anyway, so, so there you go. But what I was, I'm, I'm digressing here. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a very good interviewee because what I do is you I kind of. You've got perfect I, match in me. Uh, I'm a, uh, I'm oh, a oh, nervous I, interviewer. Yeah, you're a new nervous interviewer. I, I tend to over elaborate and, and sort of like I'll give you a five minute answer to a two second question. <laughs> Thank God, because we don't have two questions. <laughs> anyway, where I was going was yes. that the, my daughter watched the, the episode of Doctor Who and she came back, Dad, 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 it's great, it's great, and I went. What the new doctor? And she said, "No, no, no. There's a character. She arrives, and she's got dyspraxia because she can't ride a bike." Or I, I I'm misquoting my daughter. Oh, I'm yeah, yeah, but do, 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 okay. I saw, so, I've seen every episode so far. Uh, oh, okay. So for my daughter, who suffers from the condition of dyspraxia, for her it was like the greatest revelation ever that there's a character on TV 
talking about the issues that she has because she suffers from this thing. That's amazing. That's just so, amazing. So it overwhelmed completely the idea that there was a new female Doctor Who. So for each and every person, there, you know, it's, it's a battle and it's a victory for everything that they see that represents them. And for my daughter, that was the most cool thing ever that she's seen on television. So, so that puts it in perspective. You know, there's people, purists, and then there's other people saying, no, yes, female, no, it should never be a female. And then, for me, the dose of reality is my daughter's perspective, which is, there I am. It looks amazing. It's great. Yeah, like, you know, actually stole my, one of my questions was going to be um, that there is a, a bit of a mild uproar about you being replaced on Supernatural. Right. Uh, but that's how you keep shows fresh. I mean, yeah. Uh, and, 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 uh, but it's, you know, I think as an actor, you know, I think one of the most important things, aside from like, you know, awards are nice, but when people miss you and you're gone, that's got to mean a lot to you. Sure it does. That's, that, that, has a more, that's, that has a more meaningful impact. Like, wow, they really, really like me. Like the famous line, you know, like, you, they, once they see you in a role, they can't imagine anyone else doing it. Like, like yeah. Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man or, yeah. or something like that. And they see you and you go, yeah. oh God, they couldn't have picked a better person. So it's, it's like a really long walk to find a replacement that will satisfy yeah, you. Yeah, and, and I'm happy with that. And I'm happy leaving a show like Supernatural with that image yes. of death. Because what's happened is very skillfully, they've shifted. And, and there's no comparison between myself and Lisa. Lisa plays it in an entirely different way. But it's a different aspect of death. So what we're doing is we're not comparing two actors and go, he was better than she was, or she's better than him. It's more like, um, OK, so we've got one interpretation. Here's another interpretation. And I think that should be the essence of art, is that we, we kind of go, OK, there's one option, there's another option. And that's, that's why some people, when they win awards, they, a lot of people have a sort of a philosophical disagreement with the award system. You can't, yeah. like, art is not an orange. It's not the biggest pumpkin. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's something that it's unique and in, in, every, in everyone's mind's eye. How can how can you uh, metric that? You yeah, know, that, that's yeah. what's hard. Artists, but you know, it, it's a it's a love hate thing. But I think it yeah. benefits the industry more to have awards to sort of help. Yeah, I agree. Put in the public eye. And it's interesting you talk about awards because an actor like me is never going to be up for an award because I'm not in something long enough to have a character arc. If you understand what I mean. So, in many ways. A convention setting is my award where I get to meet people in person who actually know my body of work and go, oh, I really, I didn't like you, I don't watch Supernatural, but I really like Kingdom Hospital or yeah, I yeah. really like Hardcore Logo. And I go, wow, there's, um, there's a, an audience out there that appreciates my work and that's my award. Like, that's that's what it's about. It's you're, recognition. You're the, you're the video soundtrack to, lo to lies. Like, you're... You're well, in some way or mark, another. Mark indelibly, like, oh, I, I, well, I'm. <laughs> thing is, I, I, I try. I did have all this to memory, but I didn't want to make sure. I, <laughs> well, listen, I don't forget the questions. Um, what do you? Yeah. It's uh, out of the way. Damn yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what do you have uh, on the? Like, I, I, I kind of know what you have in the agenda, but I want you to say it this way so that I can actually. Well, put it uh, out there. There, some stuff I can talk about. Other yeah. stuff I can't, unfortunately. Um, but I am busy at the moment. I, I've just done a really interesting horror movie in Sudbury, Ontario, called Spare Parts. Okay. Uh, it's coming out from the Raven Banner folks, who are distributors I've of seen the, them at conventions. Yeah, 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 they yeah, have yeah. Really cool booths. yeah, yeah. And um, they're uh, they're going to be. Um, it's a horror film set in a junkyard <laughs> where I play the emperor of a junkyard. And the people that I get to be gladiators in this junkyard have been uh, taken, limb, limbs have been taken off and chainsaws inserted on their limbs. Yeah. So it's kind of like true gladiatorial schlock horror. It's great. It's a great B movie. It's, you know, it's the, uh, fun, um, fun, fun. In the Flintstones, you know, when the, the creature always goes, it's a living. <laughs> like, like you, I imagine that's what popped in the head when you yeah. said what you're going to be doing. Like, oh, here yeah, I am yeah, yeah. sitting yeah. on top of a junkyard as the king. <laughs> and it's funny, you know, like we're, we're doing stuff like we're figuring out how we're going to chainsaw somebody's head off. And all of us are, are sitting there freezing in the junkyard at the two o'clock in the morning in Sudbury. Um, all we're worried about is keeping warm. We don't actually think, oh yeah, we're actually severing somebody's head in this scene. Yeah. You, know, you just get on with it from I've heard moment actors, to moment. A lot of actors will comment that the worst acting day is better than most people's best day. <laughs> like, because people like acting and like working. Yeah. They're like, you can dig a ditch or you can be freezing as and, and playing the king of a, a junkyard, but that's way more rewarding and way more fulfilling to you than 
I guess so. I mean, if you know that it's ultimately, no matter how you suffer to get the shot, if the shot's good, you're happy. So it, it leads into something bigger than, than you, yourself and your own experience. So, and that, that for me is the essence of storytelling, right? It's about a bigger principle. Well, aside from that upcoming role, um, I imagine whatever sci-fi is currently on the air, I'll just look for you. All right. Because you'll be there like I'll, Waldo, I'll be just there. popping in, hey. K killing or being killed. <laughs> I, I'm keeping a tally. I'm sort of even at the moment. Right. Uh, well, listen, thank you so much, Julian. Oh, thank you for watching the Convention Junkies coverage of the 2018 London Comic Con. Please like, comment, and subscribe to see more, and let us know below what you think of this video. If you would like to help us with future projects, please visit our Patreon page.